Hey writers, I'm back with a third writing vlog while I work on the sequel of my first book. And with Camp NaNoWriMo coming right around the corner, I have two exciting things I wanted to share with you guys in the vlog today. Number one, not only did I finish my narrative outline slash synopsis and sent it off to my critique partners like I showed you in the last vlog, but number two, I already got feedback on the entire story because my critique partners are amazing. They did it in like a week, which means I am super close to fast drafting this book, which you guessed it is what I'm planning to do for this Camp NaNoWriMo. Now I've done more like NaNoWriMo Preptober tip videos in the past like this one. In fact, I have a whole playlist that I'll link down below that you can also find on this page on my website. But I figured this time around, it might be really fun to show you guys my actual prepping for this particular NaNo. And if you're doing camp as well, I figured you could use this video as a kind of plan with me to help you get your prepping done too. As I've been prepping, I also just watched Kate Cavanaugh's 10 step Camp NaNo prep video. And I was like, this is great. It basically has all the steps I would want to do anyway. So I thought I'd try out her exact steps as I vlog. I'll link Kate's video down below if you want to get her full process. And I'll share some of my own tips and resources as we go. For example, one of the things I want to show you guys is exactly how I'm organizing my critique partner's feedback in Scrivener. This way I have a better idea of what I actually need to work on in the story before I start drafting. This is something I briefly showed a bunch of you in my Instagram stories if you follow me over there. And a bunch of you were really excited about it and wanted to learn more. So I thought it'd be fun to go into it a little more in depth here in the vlog. And in true Britney fashion, I wanted to show you exactly how I am organizing this plan of mine. And surprise, surprise, I chose to organize the steps into a page in my Notion. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Notion, you find this super helpful and you want to learn how to make a page similar to this, I do have a Notion tutorial video, which I'll link down below. But let's get into the steps. The first step that Kate shares is to obviously pick which project you're going to work on. And as I said, I'll be working on the sequel for my book on Wings of Ash and Dust, which is a YA fantasy but I'd love to hear in the comments your guys' answers to each of these steps too. So let me know down in the comments which project you'll be working on and I'd love to know what genre you're also writing in. I did want to add too that just like book one, it also will start as a serial. This full-length novel was broken up into six ebook episodes that were fast released. It's a really fun writing and publishing strategy that you can then package into a full-length novel. So I do plan to do that with the sequel as well. And if you want to learn more about serials, how to write them, how to publish them. I have a few videos down below. And as I announced in my last vlog, I am working on a mini course for those of you that want to get my full process. And I currently have a wait list linked down below. So if you're really interested in that course, make sure you sign up for the wait list. The second step that Kate says to do is to pick your Camp Nano goal. The beautiful thing about Camp NaNoWriMo versus NaNoWriMo is that you can pick whatever goal you want. It can be writing, it can be editing, can be plotting, it can be whatever. Whereas with NaNoWriMo that happens in November, typically everyone is supposed to be writing 50,000 words in a month. I would love to know what your specific Camp NaNoWriMo goal, but if you want to know mine, I am planning to write the fast draft of this second book, but I'm not going to focus on word count goals because I don't really care how long or short this first fast draft is. I just want to get the story out. So my goals are going to be more story beat or scene goal focused. And what I mean by that is maybe the first day I will plan to write the opening image. A few days later, I might work on three scenes in the fun and game section. If these story beat terms are meaning nothing to you, I would definitely check out Save the Cat Writes a Novel that outlines all of these fabulous story beats, but hopefully that is making sense to you guys. And I did wanna say that one of the bonus steps I wanna put in here is to create a writing calendar for Camp NaNoWriMo. And I love that Notion has this this calendar view that I can put into my Notion page. And you can see in April, I already have a tentative plan of writing the opening image for day one. Of course, I'm going to fill out the rest of that, but I did want to show you guys that you can also have a Kanban board view of this. I have three sections that I'll move my to-dos too. So if I have all of the to do's in this column, and I'm coming up on the first day, I will move that to the to write column. And then as I'm writing it, I will move it to the writing column. And then when I'm done writing it, I will move it to the done column. And what's fun is when we go back to the calendar view, you can see that when I actually get this done, it will be marked as done on my calendar. Check out that notions video if you want to learn how to set all this up. But let's move on to the next step. The third step that Kate said to do is to 
announce your project and I just added find accountability, which announcing your project kind of helps you get accountability. But I just want to stress that point because I think that accountability is the biggest reason that I've been able to make the progress in my writing career thus far. So whether you are signing up on the NaNoWriMo website and using that as a resource to connect with the community, or you want to announce it on social media, or you have critique partners or friends or family that are going to help you stick to your plan, I would definitely share who your accountability people or platforms are below. And I will share that I'm <laughs> announcing it right now on YouTube. So you guys are my first round of accountability. Plus I plan to announce it on social media. So my main platforms are Instagram, TikTok, and then through my website, I'll be sharing it through my newsletter. And of course I will be highly utilizing my critique partners who I check in with on a regular basis anyway, but during any kind of nano is definitely a great time to share with them my full plan and to check in with them more often. Now, when we move to step number four, we're going to be figuring out what we actually need to prep because it's Camp NaNoWriMo. All of us probably have very different goals, but I'm going to share mine just to give you guys some inspiration. And I'd love to know what you need to prep down below in the comments. For me, I have three main prepping goals. The first one is to finish organizing my critique partner feedback that they gave me on my outline synopsis. Then from their feedback, I'm going to make a list of things that need work in the story and brainstorm solutions. And the last one is to brainstorm a scene list with bullet points. And I'll share a little bit about that as we get to that step. And as promised, let's take a little break and show you guys how I organize the comments and feedback I got from my critique partners. Some of you were asking on Instagram, and yes, this is Scrivener. And the way you get to the comment section is to just hit the little I here whenever you're on the dock that you want to add comments. And you might see this at first, but you wanna go all the way over here and click on the comment and footnotes icon. And here is where each of these comments is linked to a different part of my document that I have zoomed way, way out so that hopefully there are no spoilers. What my critique partners first got actually was a Google Doc that was easy for them to jump in and post their comments. And I know it's a little extra work, but I really like going from the Google Doc into Scrivener and posting the comments I found most helpful into my Scrivener doc like this and color coding their different kinds of comments. So yellow is like a general question or concern about the story that I should address. Green are just encouraging comments of things they really loved or appreciated. And I just really like including those to kind of make me feel good while I'm going back to edit. Blue are usually issues as well, but I mark them in blue because it usually includes something helpful from my critique process partners, like they gave an idea or some different options about how to fix something. And I'm not going to scroll down too much farther because even some of the first lines of these comments will give spoilers. But I do also have ones that are in red, which are like bigger plot things that need a lot more work than just maybe one comment. Maybe I went back and forth with my critique partner a little bit. So I have a lot more comments to save. And that's where I focus on this section called trouble spots, where I have different pages that center around specific issues that I know I'm going to need a lot more brainstorming space to work on. And if you want to add a new comment, all you need to do is highlight whatever phrase or word you want. Then you got to click this comment icon, not this top one, but this one to add a comment. It's going to add it in whatever color you last used. You can type in whatever you want it to say here or copy and paste your critique partner's thoughts. And then you just right click and you can pick a totally different color. You can collapse it and it'll just show whatever the first few words were of that comment. So you can easily get around to the different comments. And if you want to delete it, just press the X right there. I also wanted to add a little bonus step of where are you going to be organizing all of this? Kate obviously talked about this as well, but it wasn't an actual step. So I'm just adding it in here to officially say that I'm going to mainly be using Scrivener, but obviously I'm going to be using a little bit of Notion as well. And then I find that if I need feedback during the drafting process, I will also utilize Google Docs because then I can easily share it with my critique partners and they can put comments in so I can get feedback. You guys have other programs you use definitely let us know down below. I love learning about all the different programs, but let's move on to step 
five, which really starts getting down into the nitty gritty of things we might be prepping. So you might find that for these next few steps, you wanna do them in a different order. But generally I feel like the next few steps are a really good list of things to kind of check off and make sure that you do at some point. For step five, Kate mentioned nailing down the setting and history of your world. And in my Scrivener pages, I have one for the magic system, one for the world building stuff, and one for character backstories. And even though I have so much built up already for the world and magic system and character stuff in book one, I'm really trying to bring a whole nother level into book two. And as you see, I have a note here of developing a brand new part of this story's world that I'm really excited for my readers to dig into. So part of my process is I'm going to need to create an additional Pinterest board for this part of the story's world. Since the Pinterest boards for the other parts of the world that I used for book one were really, really helpful. Now, even though I'm drafting, I'm kind of also in this editing phase. Since I'm moving from getting feedback on my outline to actually drafting, I know kind of what needs to be worked on, right? So if you're just starting to prep the story for the first time, this might just be ground zero for you brainstorming from step one. But if your goal is more to edit during Camp Nano, you might be a little more like me where you know kind of things that need to be worked on and can more flesh out your world and setting and all that kind of stuff with this kind of strategy. Moving on to step number six, we have brainstorm main character motivations and other MC or main character facets. For me, after getting feedback from my critique partners, I know that my main character is really pretty much in a good place, but it's the other four fairy heirs in my story who need a little more beefing up some more than others. And in this book, I really want these four characters to have some of their own point of view chapters. So it'll be really important for them to be even more developed. One way I'm going to work on these characters' arcs and goals for this specific book is to go back to their Enneagram, which I found really helpful to develop how they were growing in book one. And if you've never thought about using the Enneagram for your characters, I do have a video where I kind of broke down how I used it for mine. And it was really, really helpful. I'm just saying. Another thing I did for book one that I really want to do in prepping for book two is to practice writing from each character's point of view in either like a journal or letter format. Even though these characters didn't have point of view chapters in the last book, it really helped me find their voice, especially for dialogue and developing their motivations and their personalities. And since they'll have their own chapters in this book, I think it'll be even more vital. I'll probably spend even more time doing a little bit of this before I start drafting. Okay. Okay, step number seven. If you haven't done this already, it'd be great to start brainstorming plot points for your story, basic big things that you'd really want to have happen, especially based on the character development you just did. And for me, from my critique partner's feedback, I'm going to be developing my current plot points even more. For example, from their feedback, I found out that my whole bad guys closed in section is actually pretty slim and needs a lot more kind of fleshing out and developing, which I'm planning to make the bad guys close in like a whole episode in and of itself. Itself. So I just added that in there. So I made sure not to forget to go back to that section and really work on it. Now we're almost done. We only have three steps left, but step number eight is to break now everything out into an actual beat sheet. Again, using resources like Save the Cat, super helpful. I've also been talking a lot about Abby Emmons three act structure playlist that she has on YouTube. So I'll link that down below too. And if you're crazy like me and you have multiple different kind of story beat systems that you like to use, you might spend a little time uh, mashing those up. So in this document here, I have put the notes both from Abby Emmons videos and the Save the Cat book to kind of combine all of the story beats and questions and notes that I found helpful into one single doc. So while I'm going and either drafting a new book now or I'm going back to edit a book and I wanna make sure that I have everything that I need or I want to kind of beef up a certain scene, I can just go to this outline page and actually look in the sidebar that is created whenever you assign like a header to one of these lines here in Google Docs and say I want to beef up the bad guys close in section, I can just click here and kind of review for myself what the bad guys close in is and any other subplots within the bad guys close in that might help me really flesh out that part of the book. I highly encourage you to write out whatever beat sheet you're going to be using and then filling in your own plot points. 
and I'll just share right here that I've obviously already done this because I've shared it with my critique partners. Now it's just time to flesh it out even more. And as we get to step nine, Kate wisely mentioned to create a story timeline of the different events in your story and how long they take, if people are traveling, if you skip time. I feel like this is something I usually end up doing after the first draft, but I liked the idea of maybe trying to do this before I start drafting, especially if I'm breaking stuff down into scenes so I can figure out how much time has passed between each scene. So I'm planning to add a page into Scrivener that I can kind of break down a generalized timeline that I'm sure will change as I draft, but at least I have something to start with. Then finally, we have step 10. And this step for Kate was to create a chapter by chapter outline. But again, I'm going to be more doing a scene by scene outline. And the reason I don't do chapter by chapters is sometimes multiple scenes can be in different chapters. And as you edit, you end up moving scenes to different chapters. So I just find it more helpful to title my scenes, no matter how long or short they are with a short phrase that reminds me what's in that scene. And then I worry about coupling them into chapters or moving them around in the editing phase. I also have a note here that because this story will hopefully be multi-POV, I plan to loosely assign which scenes will be in which character's point of view, which again could change as I draft or as I edit, but at least I have an idea of when I go to draft a scene, which point of view I'm actually going to be in. Special thanks again to Kate Cavanaugh for these super helpful steps, and I hope going through the steps with you guys gave you some really great ideas for how to prep your own story. I've linked Kate's video and any other resources I mentioned down below, as well as that page on my website with tip video playlists for every stage of the writing and publishing process. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to start enacting this plan and I'm definitely going to continue vlogging the drafting process during camp and probably hosting a few live writing sprints. So if you're excited about all that, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything and we'll see you in the next video.